As a graduate student at MIT and Harvard, I worked on a brand new network, which ultimately became the internet. I then went to Xerox Research in Palo Alto. And there in 1972 or three, we started working on what is arguably the first personal computer, sort of vaguely like the one that you enjoy today. And because I was the networking guy, my, it was my good fortune to get a problem that no one had ever had before, which is how would you connect up a building full of personal computers, one on every desk. One on every desk, can you imagine such a thing? And uh, started designing this uh, cable-based network that would connect all the PCs in the Xerox Research Center. And I teamed up with David Boggs and he and I built the first ethernet. Our house was full of doodads that I played with, including electric trains and all the regular stuff. I decided to build a computer using the electronics left over from the electric train set that my dad had helped me build. So I built an adding machine, which my eighth grade teacher called a computer. And this was in 1959, so there were no personal computers, so you have to understand that. This machine would add any number between one, two, and three to any other number between one, two, and three, turning on a light between two and six. First step toward being innovative is to realize that you can be. Invention and innovation are not genetic. They are something that can be learned. It's something that you do on purpose. I mean, if I can invent Ethernet, certainly you can. It's just a question of being determined to do it and to keep working on it and become more and more innovative every day.